Hi, this is Bill Nguyen. In the third grade, I took a test that I still think about every so often. I was sitting in the community room at Eden Palms, where I spent most Mondays and Wednesdays during the school year, where sunlight spilled onto a floor that is now wood, but was then this speckled linoleum. I remember Mr. Kelly Edmonds handing me the test, a standardized language arts exam. And I remember being reluctant to accept it because um, didn't I get enough of that during school? But then I also remember Mrs. Pamela Gutierrez luring me in with the offer of homework club dollars that could be redeemed for toys. And of course I was sold, I took up Pam on her offer, I took the test, and a few days later, Kelly delivered the results to my mom who was ecstatic. On the page were two graphs the first indicating that I'd scored well enough to be classified as advanced. The second comparing the average performance of students from high income families with that of students from low income families. Even though I should have been happy about the first graph, it was the second one that seared itself into my memory. I don't really remember numbers. I just remember two gray bars side by side, one nearly twice as tall as the other. That difference in elevation as if some people were destined to live in the mountains and others were doomed to the sea. Now I tell this particular story. I could have told a hundred others just like it. All these times I got the message that growing up in a low income family somehow makes me inferior to those lucky enough to have more. And it's not just my story. It's the story of the neighbors who live next door to me or across from me or next to the neighbors across from me. It's the story of a diverse cultural fabric united by a similar socioeconomic thread. And however wrong this class hierarchy may be, we are constantly bombarded with images of people who have more money than we do, who can live in houses more luxurious than we can, and who drive cars so expensive we could work our entire lives and still fall short of the means to buy them. And so we are constantly led to believe that these people who are richer are by implication smarter and happier and better looking and better adjusted. We internalize this way of thinking from such an early age that even as we grow older and wiser, we find it hard to abandon. Today, I am 21 years old. Last May, I received a BA in human rights, magna cum laude from Columbia University. I live in Brooklyn and work at a law firm in Manhattan and this fall, I will attend Berkeley Law School on an academic scholarship with the hope of becoming a public defender. When I speak in sentences like these, it's easy to believe that I've done this all myself. When I speak in sentences like these, with myself as the subject, it's easy to fall into the dream of a life spent in decadent isolation. But here are some truer sentences. My parents left a continent for me gave up their language and their communities for a country they barely knew and that barely knew them in turn. Eden Housing was the first institution in the United States to recognize my family in a meaningful way. Long before this political moment, Eden Housing was showing that the lives of people like me matter, was offering my family love and respect, not through a slogan, but through a home. When I think about what love and respect look like, I think of homework club, and digital connectors and summer program. I think of national night out, of meetings in the Eden Palms community room where my mother's input was actually given serious consideration. I think of the Howard T. Collins scholarship, which allowed my older brother and me to focus on our studies in college. And above all, I think of Kelly, Pam, Linda, Jennifer, Scott, Caroline, Diane, and all these other folks at Eden whose names I keep close to my heart because they see me the way that even now, when I look in the mirror, I sometimes fail to see myself. Today, I live far away from the neighborhood where I grew up, but it remains a vision in my mind, like a beloved film I return to again and again, and from which I learn something new every time. How many gestures of care warded off anxieties about my unworthiness? How many soft words led me to believe that my potential rested not in my parents' pockets, but in the ferocity of my dreams. I see in that bar graph from years ago, a message I once believed was a fantasy, but now, thanks to Eden, I know to be the truth. Where we end up doesn't have to be defined by where we begin.